every role is different. Every role is unique. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I, it, it's as it's a boy and his dog story. And I'm, I'm what's standing between him and his dog. And so I guess I'm heavy. But it's fun. I, it's really a lot of fun. It, it, I think it's the kind of film that I would like to go see, so I'm glad I'm in it. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I just sit back and watch. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a, I get totally involved in what he's doing. I can just, you know, I, when I'm not working, I'm there to, to see what he's doing. Are you going to watch him play Doc Wallace? Oh, absolutely. If, if, if it's possible, I will. You know, I love to watch him work. He's just, you know. One of the world's great directors, I mean, actors, one of the world's great actors. I mean, I have enormous respect for him. He's, I'm really enjoying working with him. He's really wonderful. He, 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 it's such a great selection for a, a first time director to, pull, to come up with something like this. Great choice. And he's doing a wonderful job. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. I'm thrilled with the with the way things are going. And it's a wonderful screenplay. It, uh, it's a terrific screenplay. It's, it's about a boy and his dog, and, and who hasn't had a dog when they were a kid or wanted a dog when they were a kid, and it conjured up all kinds of uh, memories for me when I read this, the, uh, the script. And then consequently read the book, and it, it, uh, it's a wonderful book, and he wrote a terrific screenplay off, off of the book. But it does conjure up all kinds of, uh, of memories, and I hope that uh, the audience will, will uh, react the same way I did when I read the script. Yeah, anyway, Scott is a very good actor. Also, he'll give another another dimension to Judd, no matter how heavy he gets, because he's got this inborn sensitivity. He can't get rid of it. He tried. And he's really an actor who should be much more well-known than that, but he's not one of those ambitious kind of people. I, he's very... What's important about the, uh, an actor, no matter how old they are, he has instinctive responses immediately. It's not just saying the lines. Saying the lines is a bad thing. They're, most actors do not talk, they read lines. And he's, he's very natural, he's very open. And if I ad lib with him, he's right there with me. You know? The most important value, which is really like subconscious, is compassion. You're going to feel for this child, and you're going to feel a way for the dog, but it's the child. And uh, it's nice to see children worry about loving and protecting something instead of worrying about the poltergeist or a bomb blowing them up or being hit by a monster or a vampire, you know. And that's the thing that made me happy with this and happy that Chip chose to do it, you know. I wanted to be an actor since I was four. I knew I was going to be an actor when I was nine. When I first started, I just had this feeling. When did you start? Tell me about that. Um, I started it. My first, my first thing I did was a, a department store commercial. And then I did modeling, and then I did commercials again, and then I got my first movie, which is really exciting. You feel sorry for him because his dad abused him since he was four. You feel sorry for him because the guy can't read or write feel sorry for him because he's like poor and he doesn't do anything he doesn't he, he can't go anywhere and you just feel sorry for him because Judd's like a just um a low-class kind of guy because the dog and him have this bond and he's afraid that if Judd keeps him and the dog keeps running off and Judd keeps finding him he's basically gonna kill him and uh I think uh 
he's determined to get him because of that, because they have this bond going. They have this, this natural bond. He is fabulous. The look on that child's face. Just as soon as I saw him, I thought, oh, I, don't, I should only be so lucky to be the mother of that boy. Which is the way a mother feels about a son. You know, he was phenomenal the first day, just and has been ever since. Uh, I cannot say enough about that boy. And uh, a trooper, I don't know how in the world. I remember a rough day he had on the set, as we all have. And usually it takes a while to recover. Those tough scenes where you just think, what? It's all about, in filming, each day is different. Your vibes are on, they're off. And on the days that they're off, you still have to do it, and you have to do it well. So you can say, well, I guess I'm not going to be inspired on this day, but... And that kid knows that instinctually. That's something that takes forever to learn. It's a discipline, not with him. Next thing you know, he has a moment of, uh, I'm lost, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm, I'm not doing a good enough job. He's back on that horse in an incredibly short period of time. I'm very impressed by that, and I'm crazy about it. Uh, Madison and Tori are, you can see the resemblance, of course, they're sisters, but they're as different as night and day, I think. Uh, and much of it is age-related. Um, you can tell that uh, Madison has been on a set and knows, knows what she's about. And Tori is a, just so sweet in her kind of allowing to be, she's pushed from place to place gently, this is where you go and this is what you do. And, um, they're just, they're... And, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if Tori stays in the business as, as Madison. I assume Madison started as young as Tori. Uh, but they're quite, quite it's, it's unusual, too, that you'd find two sisters uh, in a project, of course. And, uh, they're very sweet, very. I think it helps that he's been a producer for s several films. Um, his nature is just just gets the job done. He's incredibly kind, uh, incredibly accessible, which I think is extraordinary in a first in a first time director. It's a wonder that you know they could really go crazy almost all the time. There's none of that. Um, I think he feels confident in the choices he's made. It's a wonderful script. Um, I think he's chosen actors who fit them very well, and now he just lets it. Uh, He's great. He's just, he's great. And Madison Wright, who plays Samantha, she is, uh, she's, I, she just got a TV series, The Osiris Chronicles. She came in, she's just so charming and, and energetic and perfect for Sam. And uh, Ann Dowd, who plays Mom, Louise, um, was actually, I thought that was going to be the easiest role to cast. That became the, the most difficult choice. We were confronted for some reason. Every agency was sending us um, actresses for this role, and I felt it was going to be the least competitive, easiest role to cast, and Anne ended up flying herself in from New York and, and just blowing us away with a, with a reading that was just A+. Plus. It's, it's been great, you know, with the exception of... Um, a uh, a difficult uh, dog fight scene that we finally got in the can. Um, the dog has been wonderful. We've, we've used one beagle primarily, second one um, as a stand-in and uh, uh, replacement beagle. Um, and the uh, shepherd mix has been great. We've had some trouble with more of the wild animal stuff, but those are more unpredictable. And the kids, I I can't say enough good things about them. They. Um, they know their lines, they come in, they have range, they, they play it emotionally. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, ha it, I can't even, I can't say enough good things about, about working with, with kids. They, you know, they, they give, and one thing I did learn is that first and second takes are the best. He has done a lot of work, but he had never done a, a truly dramatic emotional scene before. And um, I, I don't know where, where it came from, but he, um, he pulled one out of the hat and he did a spectacular job. And all through the film, I've said, I wonder if Blake will, will do this. 
And, you know, we had a few days of rehearsals before, and we had a, a long heart-to-heart -heart before we started shooting. And um, he just, he rises to the occasion. I mean, he'll one minute be running around and joking and laughing, and then next second, oh, can I see some slides? Can I, you know, let me take a look at the script. And boom, it's memorized and it's done and it's got emotion and heart and, and passion and truth to it. And uh, it's, it's amazing to me. I mean, um, a lot of adult actors, a lot of adult actors can't, um, you know, mu muster that kind of, uh, that kind of um, level in their, in their acting. You can go to the theater and be with the audience and hear their reaction. And with a book, you don't really have that unless you're reading aloud to an audience. So it's great fun to be in a theater and hear the kids laugh at the lines that you thought were funny or gasp at the scary parts. And it's an experience. I went to an opening in Columbus, Ohio, and I got there early to see kids watching an uh, alien, space alien thing, where there were really very horrifying things going on on the screen, and the kids were running up and down the aisles and getting popcorn and talking to each other. And I thought, ah, oh, if this doesn't hold them, how can Shiloh hold them? But that evening, the kids were so quiet, and you could hear little sobs here and there, but mostly they were just totally engrossed, no one left the theater. And I think it's perhaps that space aliens they know don't exist and they don't take it seriously. But every child has been up against an adult, which an intractable adult, who is completely wrong. And they're so helpless. And I think that this spoke to them. I think every child there knew what it is like to be a up against an adult who has all the authority, who holds all the cards. The kids like to compare things, and they like to tell me which they like best. They like certain things in the book best, they like certain things in the movie best, and it's good for them to know that they're two separate things, and that you have to change things in a book to make a really good movie. You can't have a boy thinking for three pages in a scene. And they like to, uh, think how they would make a movie, how they would change it. They write to me about, sometimes they're, they're given an assignment to write another chapter to, the, to my book, saying what they would have Judd do. And they like to do the same thing with the movie, think what they would change, what they would add, if they were to do a final scene, how they would bring it about. And it's, it's interesting to get their opinions. Kids are good thinkers, and hopefully this movie will make them deeper thinkers. used to be just a book sitting on a shelf, and now it's a movie, and I get so many letters saying that I bought a dog and its name is Shiloh. I know there are an awfully lot of Shilohs out there. And, and that's, that's a, a wonderful feeling to note, especially dogs that have been rescued. I hear this again and again. A, an abused dog that has been rescued has been called Shiloh. In fact, there's, there's an organization called the Shiloh Project it, it's just very nice to know that there are ramifications um, of the book and, and the movie that go on far beyond the movie and far beyond the book and affect people's lives and animals' lives. I think one thing kids connect with is that people who abuse animals are very often uh, abused themselves or were, and they don't just see it as a black and white thing. Judd Travers' best hunting dog runs away. What do you keep following me around for? It changes Marty Preston's life. I wouldn't hurt you. Forever. I got hooked on him. I want to make sure he's treated right. Marty, this here is a dog. It's not a child. It's not your dog. That poor Ooh. dog is going back across the river. And I swear, if I find him this time, I'm going to break his legs. Even if I have to run away with him, Judd's not getting me back. You're going to have to work to pay for it. I'll From the Newberry Award-winning classic, comes a critically acclaimed film for the entire family, Shiloh. The story of a boy who learns that growing up means standing up for what he believes is right. He up. You need a bargain, Judd. You can't go back on it now. And finding the courage. You're never getting Shiloh back. To sacrifice everything. Don't you know? 
that I can put you in your place real quick to save the dog he loves. Nobody can talk to me since the judge. Oh, watch it. Do what's right. Well, what's right? All I had was your word. Ain't that worth something to you? You just might be the best boy I know. You love something, you take care of it. It's a living thing. Sam, why'd you do that? Michael Moriarty, Scott Wilson, Rod Steiger, and introducing Blake Heron in Shiloh. Because there's a place in your heart for those who need you most.